Hey everyone, Cleo here, welcome to my channel. Today is day 4 of Bookmas 2018 and today is the top 10 books that I read in 2018. Now, uh, beware, I will probably be doing this video again in January just because I still have some 4 books to get to in 2018 and I feel like otherwise they will be left out and I'm pretty sure that the one that I'm currently reading will slip into the top 10 eventually. Um, so the books uh, in my top 10 at the moment are the ones that up until this date I feel to be the best books that I read in 2018. I only have physical copies of 4 out of the 10 books on my top 10 list, but I will be posting a picture somewhere in the screen where I have some room left for the books uh, for which I do not have own a physical copy. First one that I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention um, two together. So also in advance, uh, I will not be um, discussing these in a particular order, I will just be discussing them. Um, I will just be discussing 10 of them, but I will not place them in an order from best to worst, whatever. Um, there's just one book that I'm sure is the best, because it's the only book that I gave a 5 star rating. Now I will discuss it together with another book, because they are uh, part of the same series. And these are... And so those are uh, Words of Radium by Brandon Sanderson and The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Now The Way of Kings is the first book in a series by Brandon Sanderson. I think this one came out two, to, two or maybe three years ago and it's the first series in the Stormlight Archive series which will be, I think it will be 13 books that they've set. Now they're pretty thick books, all of them, but uh, that shouldn't keep you from starting them. I mean, I know that it's part of the reason why I took so long to get started on them and a lot of people took a long time getting started on them just because it is quite daunting to have to read a book of 13, uh, like 1200 pages or something like that, but it is absolutely worth it, worth it, plus you also fly through it. I mean, it took me, for this one it might have taken me a little bit longer, but the second one, which is the one that I am giving a 5 star rating, uh, it took me 2 weeks to finish an over 1000 page book which definitely for me is saying a lot because I do not have the fastest reading pace. So yeah, I'm not necessarily going to give you a premise for these books because um, they are quite complex stories and even though they are complex you don't need to... that shouldn't be considered as being something daunting or something like that. It is pretty easy to get through them uh, and eventually the story makes sense to you, however it's a story that you cannot ever really easily explain. But so if you just look at uh, the back cover for example, uh, it will give you some indication of what the story is about and um, then you just decide for yourself. Now if you like Brandon Sanderson, if you've read Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn, then you will definitely like this series. If you've never gone into the high fantasy range, uh, beware that it is going to be a complex world with um, a very thick book. So uh, if that is something that daunts you, maybe start uh, with a lighter fantasy first. Um, the third book in that case that I put on my list is uh, Less by Andrew Sean Greer. Uh, Les is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize, not entirely sure from which year, uh, and it's basically you follow a um, like a washed up writer, basically. So he was a writer, he, uh, well he's still a writer in any case. Eh? So we follow a writer who, uh, he used to be part of this famous couple, uh, his he was together with a famous writer who was way older than him, but who um, got sick and then um, they kind of grew apart. And um, this writer's kind of flying by on the uh, reputation of being uh, this person's ex and is being constantly asked for events mostly because he is that person's ex. And he's usually quite reluctant to do so, but he uh, is trying to escape having to go to the wedding of another of his ex-lovers and uh, in order to escape from that wedding he just um, accepts a whole lot of random invitations and starts on this sort of like 
world tour that leads into all sorts of crazy adventures. It is a very charming novel and it's very fun. Uh, I always like stories that take you to very different locations and places. Uh, for me it felt a little bit like the 100 year old man who climbed out of a window and disappeared, something like that in English. I read it in Dutch so the title is a bit fuzzy to me now but uh, I really liked it, it was very charming. Um, but apart from that it is also very moving uh, and yeah I really liked it. I listened to the audiobook for this one uh, and I can definitely recommend the audiobook. I mean I don't know whether it's better to read it, as, to hear it as an audiobook or to read it but definitely the audiobook was a nice experience. Uh, fourth book on the top 10 list for me for this uh, year is the Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Uh, this is on probably a lot of people's list. So I also listened to this on audiobook. I listened to it while running all the time. And um, yeah, I'm gonna have to fix my focus because I think I'm a little bit out of focus. Better, okay. Um, so yeah, Angie Thomas, The Hate You Give. Um, I mean, a lot of people have said so many things about it. It was a wonderful book, so it's about a um, I don't know, a minor, <laughs> I don't know what her age is, I think something around 16 or something, who is uh, driving home after a party with one of her friends, so they are African Americans, and they're driving home uh, after a party with a friend, and um, they get stopped by a police car, and uh, the police officer asks them to uh, exit the vehicle, and uh, he finds the behavior of the guy who is driving her to be suspicious and he shoots her, uh, shoots him. And so she watches her close, well, she watches her friend die uh, right in front of her and the novel deals with um, her dealing with this situation, her coming to terms with what has happened, and uh, but also with like the community's response to it and her uh, increasing sense of having to do something about it, have, have the unfairness of the system and uh, it's a very important book it should definitely be taught uh, especially in America uh, but also for uh, Europeans so for me I also found it to be a very moving book definitely also touches on certain um, prejudices that are existing in European society as well um, but so yeah it was a very important book a very uh, moving book as well uh, and just overall a good book. Um, so regardless of whether you feel interest, whether the topic of race is something that interests you or not, I still think that it is a good book without, you don't need to be super interested in the subject of race uh, in order to be uh, enjoying this book. It is well executed, it is a good story, it has a very good development, so uh, you should enjoy it regardless. I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, only something in case you are interested in reading about the race issue in the US. Um, fifth book I'm on, I'm guessing. So the fifth book on my list is fifth book on my list is On Chesil Beach by Ian McEwen. This is my first McEwen that I'm reading, and I absolutely loved it. It was one of the best opening lines that I have ever read in a novel. Uh, I have a review for it somewhere, probably in one of my wrap ups. Uh, I think this was the September wrap up. Um, so uh, yeah, the premise of this is we are following two young people who are spending their wedding night together, but it is like it's set back in. So it's set back in a time when couples did not have physical interaction before marriage, and so uh, we are at the cusp of their physical relationship together, and they are both going into this with different um, opinions. So the girl is very reluctant to enter into a physical relationship, and the guy is very eager, which clearly leads to certain tensions and to certain um, difficult situations. Uh, it's a very short novel but I also very much liked it. I do feel that there were certain parts in the middle that I would have wanted to see developed differently. I ended up respecting the choice that the author made but I would have liked to see a different uh, option but uh, I still liked it very much and it was very well executed so I will definitely be checking out more of Ian McEwan's work in the future. Then um, the sixth book on my list that will take out a physical copy is a very recent one and that is The Master Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. This is a Russian uh, novel. Uh, it is a... <laughs> 
Well, it is a very weird book, you know. Uh, it is a kind of book in which not everything makes sense, not everything needs to have a purpose, for example. There are certain things that happen and they're just there to show what happens when the devil enters into Moscow, which is the premise. So um, we kind of follow the... Um, Yeah, we kind of follow the descent into the chaos of Russia when the devil descends upon Moscow. Uh, we follow two characters, especially the Master Margarita. However, the Master is only reintroduced after like uh, 100 pages or so maybe, and Margarita is only introduced way later. So uh, it is a very different novel than the standard novel that you will probably get to in a year. So uh, in that case I already re very much recommend it because it is something totally different for once. Um, but it can very well be that you don't like it. Um, I very much liked it but a lot of friends I know didn't like it. And uh, it is special and difficult because it's a Russian novel so you also have the difficulty of remembering names. <laughs> Which definitely is a difficulty. Okay, I think we are on number seven now. Number seven is, well, it's, as I said, there's no order, so I also have to like go through this list and see which I've already described. Uh, okay, I have still got Como Agua para Chocolate from Laura Esquivel. I do not exactly know what the English translation actually is of this title, as I read it in Spanish. Um, it's a very nice, this is a magical realism story, it's very short and it intermingles recipes with the story and it's very nice, like the language in which the recipes are described is super beautiful, the language overall is nice and the story development is also nice. Um, what the story is about, I'm actually quite fuzzy on it at the moment, it's been a while for this one. Um, I do remember it being like about a couple of sisters who live in a house together with their mother and um, one of the sisters is actually in love with the husband of one of the other ones I think. Um, but yeah, it's a very nice family drama and um, yeah, it was, it was wonderfully written and um, I it was so rich in atmosphere and you could also almost see like how it could be translated into beautiful images for the screen. Uh, so I would actually like to see if there is actually a movie for this because uh, I think it would be like a wonderful movie to make into an adaptation because it was so uh, cinematic in its descriptions. Um, okay, so number eight then I guess. Uh, number eight that I have on the list is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Um, I also read to <laughs> listen to this in an audiobook while I was running uh, at the very beginning of the year I think this was. Um, so Little Fires Everywhere is like a... I mean I would compare it to maybe like a Big Little Lies or something. I only saw the series for that but it's somewhat like the same. It's like tension between um, mothers in a uh, like somewhat privileged setting though uh, one of the mothers is not that privileged but um, so we follow basically the dynamics of two families and um, there are different takes on a certain um, issue in the community so there is this woman who had abandoned her baby but then um, she is then she um, realizes that it was a horrible mistake and she wants to get custody back over her baby but the people who had like uh, started the adoption process in the meantime they definitely want to keep the baby um, and so the two mothers that we are mostly following have a different take on this one of these mothers also I mean it's hinted at that she commiserates with the mother for something that has happened in her past uh, and the other mother is very much like the um, yeah, the standard um, wise privileged mother, that's what she represents in any case and uh, she is one of the best friends of the mother who wanted to adopt the baby and so she is uh, saying like yeah why this mother gave up her baby, she is not, um, she cannot and so she is very much saying, yeah, well, this mother gave up her baby, she's not capable of taking care of her child, um, she gave it up, uh, so she's clearly a bad mother. Uh, so we follow basically that um, situation, but it's mostly about the relationships between uh, different family members, for example, but also um, 
about uh, identity, finding your own identity. But so yeah, that is so what that is a bit like the main storyline in there, but it is very much more of a character driven a story in my opinion and it uh, really um, delivered on that front for me. Then the ninth book I'm going to be mentioning, I'm going to take the final physical copy, copy I have, is Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks. I did think a lot about the final book that I was going to put in there, but it did end up being Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks. Uh, because I feel, first of all, it is very suitable for the season, I would really recommend it for the uh, winter times, but it was also a very nice surprise. I mean, uh, when you read a book by a uh, actor, you don't necessarily expect the best because they often get chosen for book deals just because they will have a big uh, audience automatically. But it is also a very quality read, I feel. I mean, there were very good stories in there. I wouldn't necessarily say all of them are the greatest stories, but it is, I feel, often the case with short story collections. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed this one. And I think uh, more people will do so than just me. And the final one on my list is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hopp. So this is the first novel in... Um, shit, I don't even know the name of the series. Uh, what is it, the Farseer series? But so yeah, it's the first book in a fantasy series. I um, absolutely love it. Uh, I very much liked it. It is, uh, has a very good development. I didn't like the ending of it. I felt like the ending was a bit rushed, which is the reason why it's also another five star read. I gave it a four star rating just because of that, because endings I feel are very important. And this one felt super rushed. I mean, um, if there's gonna be a sequel, you might as well skip, uh, you might as well have like cuts between the two books earlier or just extended the first book more, or because. Um, yeah, I just felt like the entire last 50 pages or something are, were rushed, which is the reason why I didn't end up giving it a 5 star rating. But um, overall I really enjoyed it, it was very enthralling and uh, I read through it very fast and I'm definitely going to continue in this series. It's taken me forever to start them actually, but I'm super happy that I've started now. So these are my 10 books, they are from a couple, they're a little bit disparate but not super disparate. I mean, I've three fantasies in there, which I'm super happy about that I've got three fantasies in there uh, because I've been a bit on the slump fantasy-wise and then the majority of them are um, literary fiction uh, which is a genre that I read quite a bit and usually I read books in, that have been like acclaimed in this genre so they automatically you will have a bigger chance of ending up in like a top 10 list or something like that because that's just something that I very much like to read. Um, so, but so yeah, as I said before, in January I will be redoing this video since I'm definitely suspecting that there will be some changes in there. I have at the very least one book that might make its way in there, but I'm also, re I'm also reading three classics in December and classics have also got a good shot with me of get ending very high on the list. Um, you know, I'm not saying that uh, fantasy or any of the other genres have left less of a chance, it's just more of a hit or miss situation with me. I read a couple of fantasies this year, but they were mostly YA fantasies, and I feel with YA especially that often I just feel like I'm reading the same thing over and over again, and so they will most likely not end up in any top ten list of mine. But so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this list. Then let me know if based on my uh, top ten list there are certain books that you would like to recommend to me. Always looking for more recommendation. And I'll see you tomorrow with uh, the books that I wish I had gotten to in 2018, which I will keep down to a bare minimum because basically there are always way too many books that I wish I could have gotten to. <laughs> but okay, see you tomorrow.